Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been a while. It's uh, nice to, well, not see you, but to know that you're there. So thank you for joining us. You know, the beautiful thing about tea, there's, there's a lot of them, there's a lot of them, but um, the beautiful thing about tea is it's wonderful synergy with all types of food. So today we're going to be talking about a match made in heaven and, and pretty much most teas together with certain types of food are incredible pairings, incredible and truly the match made in heaven. Well, Robert's going to talk more about that, so I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, steal his thunder. So we have uh, a presentation of tea-inspired drinks. We have uh, incredible ingredients. Tea being the star. Whenever we pair tea with anything, it's always about respect for the tea because all of these beautiful terroirs they have incredible natural benefit. And what more luxurious and what more of a heavenly beverage than Tea, where its taste, aroma, appearance, texture, mouthfeel, all influenced by the influence of nature or the confluence of nature. So we have a question for you. Did you ever think of alcohol working with tea? I can tell you while the question is coming up. So yes, there's a few. Okay, initially it's yes, of course. But I can tell you, in 2003, when we first launched our tea bar, back then in Sri Lanka and here in this country where we love tea and we drink tea pure, we got a letter from the narcotics department and they said, what are you doing adding alcohol to tea? At that time, it was probably, um, probably to be expected. It was a bit of a shock, but uh, nevertheless, we got over it. And uh, as you can see, I, I didn't end up in remand. I am very much around, but yeah, so... The answer is yes, of course, by 79%. And some, no, I want to know more. Brilliant. Well, we're going to be telling you a lot more. So now it is my absolute pleasure to introduce my colleague who's going to talk about how tea elegantly paired with life, but is also in terms of beverage, uh, a wonderful component of life. Robert Sinkel. Robert, are you there? I am. Good, uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. How's it going in uh, Amsterdam? Uh, well, good. I think this is actually one of the few days a year that uh, the temperature here is higher than in Sri Lanka. You're that hardly ever happens, it? but we're, well, we're going to hit 35, 36 today. I don't wow. know what it's like uh, in Sri Lanka. It's, it's less because we're in the middle of a monsoon and when it rains here, it gets cool. But uh, we have a cup of tea. Whether it's warm or whether it's cold, um, tea always makes it makes the day better. Robert, I love your shirt, and now I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. So I'll have your slide on, and the floor is yours, Robert. Once more, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, uh, wherever you are. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, we're going to talk about how uh, tea pairs with food. Um, now, in general. He is an amazing partner for tea. Um, there's such a huge variety in teas that you can always find a tea that match uh, a, a specific uh, uh, food item, food group, fruit, vegetables, whole dishes. Um, he can really, um, uh, as, a, as if you push and pull, to, to push something in the back, to pull something forward to make something shine. And I have like four very easy examples that will, uh, uh, that will, that will sort of explain this, uh, this principle of tea and food pairing. And uh, the first one is a, is, is a very easy one, a very simple one, uh, but nevertheless amazing. Uh, made with, with one of my, uh, my favorite teas. It's a uh, Salon Silver Tips white tea. Very, very soft and elegant, delicate tea that is usually brewed with a water of uh, with a temperature around 85 uh, degrees centigrade. Uh, but I've done it different this time. I've made a cold brew. Uh, and basically all you need to do is make sure you have uh, uh, filtered water, preferably uh, uh, spring water or, 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 uh, or mineral water. Um, and literally if it comes in a bottle, just open the bottle, put, uh, put the white tea in, close the bottle again and put it in the fridge for let's say nine to 10 hours, let's say overnight. Do it in the evening, take the bottle out in the morning, filter it, and then you, oh, there's a similar color as when you do it with a hot brew, 
uh, but the um, the process of the extraction of flavor uh, works slightly different, which results in a, a very soft, a very elegant, very flowery and natural, uh, naturally sweet uh, tea. I always like to uh, present my teas in uh, something different than a teacup. And especially for this drink, a champagne flute is by far the most appropriate glass. I put some ice in the glass, give it a quick stir, just to make sure that the glass is perfectly full. Throw the water, the ice. Then pour the white tea now. Many people, including Dylan and myself, we often refer to uh, Salon Silver Tips white tea as a sh champagne amongst teas. And uh, to me, it, it, it really is. It has the same, same finesse, the same delicacy, the same luxury. Um, even the mouthfeel, when you take a sip, it, it feels luxurious. And uh, for this very simple and elegant drink, there is no better partner than a strawberry. Because of the cold brew, uh, natural sweetness in the tea is highlighted. But the tea itself can highlight, uh, um, uh, especially fruit notes, fruity notes in, um, no, in other uh, items. But let's say uh, the flavor of this strawberry is, is highlighted, what is boosted. Um, we have a sip of the tea. Now, I, I, I wish I could share it with you, but maybe you can look at my face and then Let's first take a, take a sip of the tea, make sure you, uh, your palate is all tea, then take a bite of... Uh... It's a good strawberry. But the white tea, the, the smiling plate, the white tea really brings, um, brings back and actually enhances the, uh, the, the strawberry flavor. So it's... Um, it's a really simple pairing. Usually when we serve this at, at events, we uh, either put the strawberry here or there. Uh, this is a, a really, a, a, it's a garnish you're supposed to eat, adds to the experience. So first pairing is uh, strawberries and cold boot salon silver tips white tea. Uh, of course, exactly how to make this tea, you can find all the info on, on the Dilma website. Just a matter of finding uh, good strawberries and good water, and then you're all set. Now the second one is uh, is a black tea, and actually a black tea that a lot of us wake up with. It's uh, the brilliant breakfast tea of the tea series of Dilma. And uh, for this one, I have, again, a, a, a very easy pairing. If you, if you look at this tea, if you, if you taste it, it it's malty, it's full body, it's, it's, a, um, it's a, a strong tea, has an, has an earthy edge. Um, and what we're going to add to that is uh, a bit of sweetness. This is a lovely ice cream. It's a cookie dough from Ben & Jerry's. Obviously, uh, milk, ice cream, uh, goes great with tea, especially with, with, uh, with black tea. But it's got chunks of cookie dough and chunks of chocolate inside. Now, the chocolate is dark. Um, for a, 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 a malty, uh, low-grown tea, like a, like a breakfast tea, um, really goes well with malty notes or, or earthy notes. You really, uh, um, it gives depth and weight to, uh, um, yeah, to, the, to the flavor, you feel really it on your palate. As soon as you take a, a bite of the ice cream, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the, the ice cream itself really um, changes the texture. Obviously, it becomes very creamy. The chocolate hits the earthy notes in the tea, and uh, the dough hits the, the sort of makes it. Oh, yeah, well, I told you it was uh, quite hot here. So this is what happened to my ice cream in a, in a couple of minutes. But 
Nevertheless, Ben and Jerry's sticky dough. With, of course, a cup of the beautiful, brilliant breakfast tea. Now, what I would like to say about this combination is uh, you might want to uh, brew your tea a little stronger than you would normally do. Make sure uh, uh, it's not really over brewed, but normally if you brew it this strong, you would add something like sugar or maybe milk. Don't, don't, because the ice cream is going to take over that function. Take a bite of the ice cream, you take a sip of the tea, and it sort of balances things out. Uh, very important to remember, we are looking for pairings. Is uh, something has to happen on the palate. And uh, you might want to brew your tea uh, um, not exactly uh, as strong as you would normally do when you just drink it. Uh, but if, you, if, you're, if you're trying to um, create a, like a, a new experience, uh, and in this case, the bitter tea and the sweet ice cream, uh, sort of uh, uh, together reach, reach a new level. You're not going to, if I add sugar to the tea, it's not going to work. If I add milk to the tea, it just brings down the effect. But like this, I can, uh, a bitter strong brew tea with, uh, with, with the dairy and the sweetness of the ice cream, that just start, starts a whole new thing. It's an uh, amazing combination. So... Um, you compare tea with, uh, with, with fruits, with, uh, uh, with, with, with vegetables, with small snacks, uh, with whole dishes. Um, with uh, Dilma, we've been working uh, with chefs for over 10 years now, over 15 years, and uh, constantly trying to find, uh, uh, to present teas that match their, uh, their dishes and their creations. Um, but it doesn't end there. It's not just food. Uh, tea is also an amazing partner for spirits, I'm a cocktail bartender. I, I, I love mixing drinks, but in this case, I'm going to serve one drink next to uh, the other. In this case, well, we had white tea. Now, the black the, the, the breakfast tea was obviously black tea. From black tea, we go basically one step lighter again to oolong tea. This is actually the uh, first Ceylon oolong. I find it an amazing tea. It is an, an oolong, probably more a Formosa style oolong than a Chinese mainland style oolong, where, which are usually lighter, but this one has got, um, you really taste the terroir. If I, if I smell this tea, if I drink this tea, it is really, uh, you taste Sri Lanka. Um, this tea uh, has a, a, a beautiful toasted edge. It's not smoky, uh, but toasted. Um, maybe even a, a, a buttery edge to it. It is really is one of uh, my favorite teas to work with. If you look at the color, it's uh, slightly lighter than, uh, than, than, than most black teas. It sort of looks like a high grown black tea. Um, and uh, now this it is, there's quite a few. This is my actually my favorite whiskey to pair it with. It's the uh, Longmorn 16. Now, this is not widely available. So if you want to do the same pairing, uh, just try a black label. Works perfectly with black label as well. Uh, and you just uh, uh, take one sip of the tea, take a sip of the whiskey, sip of the tea, sip of the whiskey. Um, so one after the other. Don't, don't, don't combine them in this case. And uh, always first sip is, uh, is tea. And make sure your palate is, uh, is all oolong now. This one has some, some uh, notes of, of, of dark fruit as well. Something you op uh, often find in, uh, in good aged whiskeys as well. This one has, uh, has a hint of smoke, lots of, um, let's say, leather, hint of hay, especially the hay 
ladder, that's really gonna uh, gonna be boosted by by the tea. So now it's been a, been a couple of seconds after the sip. If I take a sip of the tea now, specific notes from the whiskey uh, come back now. In this case, the hay has gotten a boost. It actually brings down uh, uh, the uh, the leather a little, gives the smoke a little a little push. You sort of sort of reliving uh, the sip of whiskey uh, after a sip of tea. This is one combination. We found out there are numerous. Again, if you go to the Dilma website, uh, we've done quite some research already, although this is quite new, but still we did quite some research already on which spirits go well um, with, uh, with, uh, with which teas. And uh, whatever your favorite spirit is, we can find the perfect tea to match it. Now, for the last pairing, it's actually going to be a pairing with a tea cocktail. And uh, this is actually a drink that um, I made for, uh, for for Dylan and his father. They uh, they lo they love their whiskeys, but I thought, well, we're gonna do it slightly different. Because I know you like whiskeys, but how about rum? Mm -hmm. And in this cocktail, we're going to use another amazing tea. Very specific. It's a tea that you either like or you don't. I very much like it. Most whiskey drinkers like it. See, by the way, it's the first salon souchon. And what's so special about this tea, like most Two charms are smoked on uh, on a pine wood fire. This one is a cinnamon wood fire. And uh, now, don't expect the tea to taste like cinnamon, but when you drink it, the cinnamon just adds a very subtle sweet note to the tea, um, and it, it just makes it really interesting. It's not as uh, as strong as, for instance, a lapsang souchong, which is much heavier on smoke, much heavier on on the on the on the leather like experience. This one's more subtle. So there is a, there, there is a smoke, but it's not as dominant as uh, uh, as you would expect with the with the souchong, and it it just leaves room for for in this case other ingredients to shine as well. The base for this cocktail is uh, zacapa. Zacapa is a Guatemalan rum. Just to give a little kick to the tea flavor, I'm going to use some uh, elixir. This is a uh, beautiful, let's say, tea syrup made of real tea created by Dilma. It's quite strong, so I just use one spoon, which gives a kick to the tea flavor. And normally, I would use uh, orange bitters now, um, but I'm not going to do it because uh, bitters is going to be part of the pairing. What I'm going to do with this one is, as I now mix the elixir with the rum, add some tea. Uh, with this pairing, I'm going to um, try to create a balance between uh, sweet and bitter again. Uh, this time, uh, the tea is not uh, the bitter component, but uh, chocolate. Yes. Now, the rum uh, also is, is quite sweet by nature, so that's why I just need a little bit of the elixir to basically create a, quite a, a sweet cocktail. But I'm going to serve it with dark chocolate. Now this is a, this is 70% uh, cacao chocolate. Uh, the one with the hazelnuts is a, is a little lighter. But now you 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 really want the um, uh, the earthiness and the bitterness that you find in the strangeness that you find in dark chocolate that sort of dries your mouth. And we're going to sort of balance this out with a uh, with a uh, rather sweet drink. 
if I would just have this drink, it would be too sweet for me. But when I combine it with it, with a bite of the chocolate, the bite, chew it, uh, it sort of dries my mouth, take a sip of this, and it just, again, uh, um, uh, yeah, they, they, they become something new. The finishing touch for this is a zest of orange. Now, the orange goes great with all the ingredients in the coffee, but obviously also with dark chocolate. So the orange is sort of going to form a bridge between the spirit, the tea, the chocolate. Uh, the, uh, the rum is high on chocolate notes as well. So it's both sort of chocolate and chocolate that are um, um, connecting. There's the uh, bitter chocolate and the sweetness from, uh, from the drinks. That's already a, uh, a pairing on, uh, on three different levels. And uh, if you go even, uh, uh, even further, um, the, the, uh, the, the smoke from the, uh, from the tea really adds an entirely extra layer to, uh, to the rum, which is normally, you don't find hints of smoke in there, uh, unlike in whiskeys. So uh, there's, there's actually four things happening at the same time when you combine uh, this cocktail with, uh, with dark chocolate. So again, the trick is sip of the drink. It's nice, but that's a very sweet end. Uh, usually uh, a bit of bitterness really, um, the last, if the last thing you taste is a pleasant bitterness, you, you keep on drinking it. It's one of the reasons why tea is so successful. If you have a sip of tea, in, in the beginning, it's, it's, it's refreshing, but it's a strange you see, and a pleasant bitterness at the end make you do this move naturally, which I'll have another sip. That's, uh, mm. But that part we create with the chocolate. Now, when you have a mouthful of chocolate, then take a sip. Oh, that's good. I mean, it's it's noon here, but if I uh, taste this, it's actually the right time to uh, to drink. Um, if you are looking for your own pairings, uh, what really helps is to, when you want to find the right tea to match with with whatever you want to um, want to pair. Is uh, especially if you just do a tea pairing, it really helps to. Uh, to Take, take the, the food, like let, let's say a cake, you take the cake, eat it, while you're eating it, just smell the tea. That's where you can already find out whether the, uh, whether the pairing is, uh, is going to work or not. If you want to choose from different teas, just first brew all the teas and just take one bite, smell the different teas and see which one uh, matches best. Um, I, I guarantee you, uh, there is a perfect tea for every single dish, bite, or spirit. Uh, that's it from uh, for me from the, from this side, uh, Bilham. I think you have another question for the audience. We do. So we're gonna we're gonna look a little bit at the Q and A. But before we do, I want to share something a little bit uh, uh, behind the teas. And um, you know, Robert, we've visited uh, many of our estates on so many occasions. But the be real beauty about some of these teas is the fact that the characteristics that Robert described, they come from nature in a very genuine sense. So here, but the Souchong is a little bit different. And I want to talk a little bit about the Souchong. I'm going to give you a little introduction because this is a specialty. So you have the tradition of the Lapsang Souchong from China. It is, it is loved because of its tarry, uh, smoky nature. And so we found this a little bit aggressive. So, you know, us Sri Lankans, we love our curry, but when it comes to our tea, we like it a little bit gentler. And so we, on Rilhene Estate, we started a, a, a trial. What we did, we also grow on that estate. We grow some beautiful Ceylon cinnamon. Ceylon cinnamon is incredible, aromatic. It's, it's, it's delicate, it's complex, it's woody, but it's, it's, it gives a soft edge to this Souchong. And so, this is really a spectacular tea. What happens here is that on, on Rilhene Estate, once we harvest, once we handpick the teas, we put them 
into the withering trough, into the uh, where, where the moisture is brought down. Then we put them into a, a roller. Essentially, what it does is exactly what the uh, physicians in ancient, ancient China did, just uh, rolls the leaf to bring out the juices and allow the, 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 sap, the cell sap to, to intermingle. And that begins the evolution of flavor. And at that point, when it's uh, uh, still in dual stage, we take it out, we put them in cotton bags, and we put them into a little smoking room. And we have the embers of cinnamon, Ceylon cinnamon, with all the beautiful oils and amazing fragrance. And that for three days, pretty much for three days, and maybe a little bit more sometimes, the Ceylon cinnamon gently infuses its aroma into the tea. And then we complete the process, we do the drying, etc., and you have this spectacular combination of quite a, a, a soft, gentle smokiness. Now, I know it's hard to believe, but a smokiness can be gentle, which is why it works so well with uh, in Robert's combination. And that's one of my favorite drinks. I, I love a lot of what he does, especially the chais, but his tea-inspired cocktails are beautiful. So soft on the nose, but you've got the smokiness. It's very evident. But then what, what the, the cinnamon does here is it just brings through the cinnamon oils. It makes a, a gentle edge. And so beautiful, uh, complex, and yet smoky. Because typically, whenever you smoke anything, it takes over. But here, it's still retained, which is why this beautiful combination uh, works. Thank you. Thank you for that, Robert. So we're going to be taking, we're going to, we've got lots of questions. So we're going to be talking about the, the questions in a minute. But uh, um, yeah, be, before that, I think, have, have we got a poll, guys? We have a poll. So what we're going to be asking, which pairings would you most likely try? Cold brewed white tea with strawberries, uh, hot, brilliant breakfast tea paired with chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream, the Ceylon Old Fashioned with uh, bitter chocolate, or the Johnny Walker Black paired with first Ceylon oolong tea, or all of them. Tell us, well, I like this. I like this. 58% say all of them. Excellent. That, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm on your side, 57% or, or 39 people. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, um, we're live on Facebook, and the recording will be available there. I'm sorry for, for those of you who joined us a little uh, a little late. You can check it out. Now, um, we have questions. Um, okay, no, before the questions, um, any of the teas that you saw here, you can uh, pick it up on the School of Tea Recommends section of shop.dilmati.com. And for those who are collecting your badges, please remember this is the final session from uh, the module two. So to complete your claim for the tea inspired module two, World Chefs and Dilma badge, you have, uh, you have to complete episodes four to six. And uh, oh, we have another, we have another poll. Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? We need, you know, we're asking you these questions, not because we want to annoy you, but uh, because we really want to make sure that we deliver the kind of content that you would like. You know, we're all in a virtual, uh, format, which is a little new. We used to be do this in person, but uh, that's fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you're looking forward to more. Excellent. Everyone, thank you for staying with us. Robert, thank you. Um, to conclude, you. remember, get your badges sorted if you're participating. This is the final session of module two. And Robert, with that, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the warmth in Amsterdam. Give our love to Good. everyone in the Netherlands and greetings Good. from Sri Lanka. Yes. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Hope to, uh, to catch. Stay safe. Thank you, Robert. You too. Bye -bye. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for joining.